Hello, BookTube, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I've been working on these four books this week. Uh, first of all, I've been rereading Dune uh, in preparation for a review. Uh, last week on my weekly reading vlog, I promised a review of Dune within the week, and that obviously didn't happen. Sorry, it was another busy week. But uh, I'm pretty certain I'll do it this coming week. So um, this coming week, I, I should film a, a review of, of this book. Uh, I am also continuing to work on Buddha by Tezuka Osamu, uh, volume seven now. And uh, Journey to the West, volume two, I'll talk about this more in a moment. And Diagramming Sentences by Amy Lynn Hess. Uh, and I can show you my work from this week. Sorry, one minute here. Uh, so this week I finished off chapter 11. Uh, and uh, I know that on the camera this is going to show up in reverse. So you're not going to be able to make any sense of this, but maybe you can see that I've done some work. And the corrections are in red. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, chapters 11 and 12, I have some nits to pick on this, some, some bones to pick, perhaps. Uh, I don't feel like everything was explained very well, especially in chapter 12, but I think I'll save that uh, little digression for when I do a full review of it. Uh, and then comprehensive exercise one and comprehension ex comprehensive exercise two here. And uh, yeah, that's uh, still, still a few more exercises to go, but I am nearing the end of that book and I'll give a full review of it once I finish it. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'll think I'll, I'll use this video this week to talk about Journey to the West. So um, I read about 40 pages of this and I'm still on the same episode I was talking about last week. That this uh, book is episodic. There, there are various episodes as they fight various demons along this journey, and I'm still on the same episode. Um, prior to filming this video, I, I was thinking about what I had read this week and realizing that I was having a very hard time keeping it all straight in my head, which also happened to be last week, and I had to go back and review and, and try and remember everything that had happened. Uh, and I'm a little bit worried that my memory is not as sharp as it used to be as I'm getting older. Um, I don't know. My, my, my mother uh, had a bad memory as, as she went into middle age. So a uh, little bit worried about that, especially because I, I used to really prize myself on how well I remembered what I had read. But my own mental shortcomings are only of interest to me, so I, I won't bore anyone else with it. Uh, other than to say that I, I think there could be other external factors. Um, that is that this, this story is so zany and so all over the place that it's a little bit hard at the end of a chapter to kind of think back and remember everything that happened in that chapter. Um, it's, you know, this is one of those books, even though this is, this is an old classic from the 16th century, it reads really fast paced, you know, it reads like a Looney Tune. Um, so I'm pleasantly surprised to find how entertaining this book is and how fast paced it is. It is, as I've said before on this channel, it is very repetitive, but it's certainly not slow. Certainly everything happens at a very fast pace. So let, let me see if I can remember everything and lay out what, what happened in the pages I read this week. So the, the, the story is that uh, there's a uh, priest who's traveling to the West to get the Buddhist scriptures. He is accompanied by a monkey, a pig, a dragon who has been transformed into a horse, 
and uh, an, another spirit called Friar Sand. Where I had left it the previous week, uh, they're traveling this mountain, traversing this mountain that has a bunch of demons on it. Uh, the demons have captured the pig, but the demons want to capture the, the priest because uh, the priest is a reincarnation of the golden cicada who has acquired so much merit that eating his flesh would give you some sort of special enlightenment powers. Um, but they're, they're also worried about the monkey god, uh, so they want to incapacitate the monkey god first. So they've already got the pig. They know that the priest is traveling, so one of the demons disguises himself as an aged Taoist priest. Uh, and uh, he goes and presents himself to the monk uh, who, who's traveling, the Buddhist monk. Uh, and he, he says, I've gotten lost on this mountain. I don't have any food to eat. I need help. If you could just escort me to safety, I would be your slave for the rest of my life. And the monk says, uh, what are you talking about? I'm not going to make you a slave. Uh, it would be my pleasure to do a good deed for you and escort you to safety. And he commands the monkey to uh, hoist the Taoist priest on his shoulders and, and carry him. Now, the monkey, uh, the monkey has the powers to see through all these disguises. So the monkey knows uh, this, this is really a demon. But the monkey doesn't argue with... Um, the, the Buddhist monk. And it's not really explained why, uh, although it's kind of implied that the monkey's just learned not to argue about this. And, and certainly as a reader, you can make that leap because the last time the monkey argued about this, the last time the monkey tried to convince the monk that the, you know, the old man was really a demon in disguise or the old woman was really a demon in disguise, the monk ended up disowning him. So the, the monkey is carrying uh, the uh, demon who's disguised as a Taoist priest. But the, the monkey, at, at a certain point, goes off to the side for a bit and says, I'm tired of carrying him. It would be easier to just kill this old demon. Uh, and the, the demon, of course, hears that and he knows that the monkey has is on to him. So they he... he because he's worried that the monkey is planning on killing him, the demon says a spell where one mountain is lifted up and travels and lands on the monkey's shoulder. And the monkey feels the weight of the mountain, but he's still able to keep going. So the demon says another spell, and then another mountain comes and lands on the monkey's other shoulder. Uh, the monkey is still able to keep staggering forward. He's complaining about the weight. He's... Uh, so then, uh, finally, a third mountain is what finally incapacitates the monkey. Um, so then the monkey is caught, uh, underneath the weight of these three mountains. Uh, and then, uh, it's only left the horse and the priest in Friar Sand. The pig, of course, had already been captured and is hanging from the, from the walls of the demon cave. So the, the demon fright fights Friar Sand, and they have a big fight, but the demon eventually wins uh, and captures Friar Sand and the priest and the horse, and they are now all hanging from the, the demon's cave. Um, so the demon goes back and tells his brother, there, there are two demon kings here, uh, two brother demon kings. He says, good news, uh, I've captured the priest and we don't need to worry about the monkey anymore. He's trapped uh, under those mountains. Uh, and his brother said, okay, well, we need to be absolutely sure that the, the monkey will not bother us. So send a couple of our uh, demons to put him in this gourd. Now, they have this gourd, which uh, if you call somebody's name, and they respond to it. The magic of the gourd will just suck you inside the gourd. And then the gourd also has some magic where it turns you into pus uh, after a number of hours. So they, they send some demons out to get the monkey to respond to his name being called so that he gets sucked into the gourd and turned to pus. Now, while these demons are traveling out, the monkey 
is still trapped under the mountains, but one of the protector gods realizes what's happened to the monkey, and he says to the local deities, what, what have you done? Uh, and the local deities, now, now this is something that was not clear initially when the demon king was using his spells. But I guess as it turned out, the way that the demon king was able to use his magic, he wasn't actually moving the mountains himself. He was commanding the local deities of the mountain, I guess. So the, protect the protector god said to the local deities, what, what have you done putting this mount these mountains on the monkey god? Uh, the, the, this is the monkey god who fought against heaven and who has now been redeemed to accompany the, the monk. And if he ever gets free, he is going to have his revenge on you. And they said, the, the local deity said, well, we didn't know what was happening. You know, somebody chanted the spell, so we had to comply with it. So we, we didn't realize who this was. So the protector god, whoever the protector god is, it, it was a little bit unclear to me. Uh, says to the local deities, all right, the monkey king just may just let you off if you lift the mountains off now. So the, the local deities say to the monkey, if, if we remove the mountains from you, will you promise not to have your revenge on us? And the monkey says yes, and they, they take the mountains off. And then the monkey says, okay, I'm, I'm just going to hit your feet with my cudgel. And they said, what? You, you promised us you wouldn't get your revenge. And the monkey says, well, I, I have to hit you a little bit. I'm in, in a bad mood. Uh, and while they're debating, the, the demons who have the magic gourd come uh, with the intent of putting the monkey in the gourd. Um, and then the monkey sees what's going on. So the monkey disguises himself as an aged Taoist. Uh, again, I guess this is a popular disguise in this novel disguises himself as an aged Taoist and, and goes down and talks to them. Uh, and w when they say that they're looking to get their revenge on the monkey, the monkey in his disguise says, oh, I hate that monkey just as much as you do. I also want to get my revenge on him. Uh, and then he, he starts making conversation with them and he finds out that they have this treasure of this gourd. And I think they actually have two treasures, if I remember right, but I don't remember what the other treasure was. But anyways, the, the monkey uh, also says that he's got a treasure. Now, the monkey has this ability to pluck hairs off his bodies, and then his, his hairs can turn into anything. So the monkey plucks one of the hairs off his bodies and makes it into a gourd. And the monkey says, my gourd is so powerful that even the sky will go inside of it. Uh, and the, the demons, of course, don't believe him. So the monkey says, I'll prove it. But then the monkey runs off into heaven. Uh, and the monkey, um, now, of course, the heaven is very afraid of this monkey because of all the things that happened at the beginning of the book where the monkey fought his little war against heaven. So when, when the monkey goes up to heaven, heaven is like, the heavenly kingdom is like, oh, okay, what do you want? You're not going to cause any trouble, right? And the monkey says, I... I've got to trick these demons uh, in order to rescue the priest. Uh, and we need to rescue the priest because this is the mission that I've been sent on. So, so you need to support me on this. He says, I, I just need you to make it look like the sky is getting wrapped up and put in my gourd for me. Uh, so they, they work out this agreement where one of the gods, I, I believe his name is Neza or something like that, is going to wrap some sort of sheet over the sky to make it look like the sky is disappearing uh, as the monkey is saying his spell and throwing up his gourd. So they, they do that so it looks like the sky is disappearing um, when actually the sky is just being hidden. Uh, and so it appears that the monkey is capturing the, the sky in his gourd. Uh, and then the other two demons say, oh wow, that's magnificent. Uh, and the monkey gets them to trade their treasures, their gourd, for his gourd. And so they make the trade. Uh, and then the, the, he, the monkey leaves with their gourd. And they try out the monkey's gourd and try to uh, capture the sky again. And it doesn't work. And at this point, they realize that they've been tricked. 
Uh, but they go back to their masters and they explain what happened, that they're scared that they're going to be punished. Uh, and the demon kings immediately recognize that this is the monkey who has tricked them. Um, but they say, okay, we still have two more treasures left. One of them is a golden rope. I, I forget what the other one is. So they, they, he says, what we need to, the golden rope is being held by their mother. It was a, a, a demon in another cave. So they, they send uh, two servants to get their mother. And the, uh, the, this time they're choosing special servants, like servants they can rely on, which is Sea Dragon and Mountain Tiger. Um, now, just as a quick digression, th this is part of the reason why this book is so much fun to read is because there's so many magical creatures uh, dragons and tigers and leopards and, and all, all these sort of magical creatures all over the, this mountain. All, all, and magical mountains all throughout this book. Um, it's, it's just a, a world populated with a lot of spirits and demons and gods and magical animals. Anyways, the monkey at this point has disguised himself as an insect, so he overhears what's happening. And then as the mountain tiger and sea dragon are running, the monkey disguises himself as a little fox demon and joins them. And they say, who are you? And he says, well, I, I'm, I'm part of the demon family. And they said, no, we, we don't recognize you. And the monkey said, yeah, the, the, the two demon kings sent me to make sure you're not, uh, you're, you're not lingering or meandering on your journey. And because he, he, he's... He knew all the details of their journey. They allowed him to go along with them. Um, and then once the monkey figures out where they're going, he takes out his golden cudgel and hits them and, and uh, hits them so hard he turns them into mincemeat, uh, is what the book says. So then the monkey disguises himself as sea dragon and uh, mountain tiger. And he, he's able to do that again by with the help of one of his hairs. So he pulls out one of his hairs. I, I believe the hair, the hair turns into mountain tiger and the mo monkey disguises him, himself as the sea dragon. Could be the other way around, I don't remember. So they go to the, the monkey and his hair, uh, go to the, the cave of the old mother demon. Uh, and uh, the, the monkey says, uh, your, your sons want you to come and participate in eating the flesh of the Tang priest. The Tang priest is the monk. And bring your treasures, the, the golden lasso. Uh, the, sorry, I, the golden cord, I believe is what it's called, although it functions as a lasso. Uh, and the, the old demon woman says, oh, such dutiful sons. Okay, I, I will come. So she, she comes with them, and the monkey is carrying her, uh, and she's got a whole escort of demons that are coming. But at a certain point uh, along the road, uh, the monkey kills all the demons that are escorting her and kills her, and then he disguises himself as her. Uh, so then the monkey arrives disguised as the old demon mother uh, and uh, is welcomed by the, the two demon kings, uh, and uh, the meanwhile, the pig and Friar Sand are, are, are still prisoners in this cave, and they're hanging up on these chains. And the pig sees uh, that the old woman demon is really the monkey in disguise. Friar Sand doesn't see it, but the, the, the monkey's tail is still protruding out. It's... Uh, in a lot of these transformations, I, I don't believe all of them, but in a lot of them, the monkey can't seem to get rid of his tail. So if, if you know what to look for, you can recognize that it's the monkey. So Pig explains this to Friar Sand, don't worry, it's really the monkey in disguise. He's come to rescue us. So the pig is really happy. Uh, and then the, the, the demon kings say to their mother, who's really the, the monkey in disguise, they said, mother, would you like anything to eat? And the monkey says, well, maybe if you could just chop off the pig's ears and cook them in a soup for me. Now, it's, it's not clear why the monkey says this other than to just make mischief. Um, certainly the pig thinks that the monkey is just there to make mischief. So the pig says, cut off my ears, will you? You're, you're not going to like to 
what, what I have to say is not going to be pleasant for you to hear. And it, it says in the text that this gives away the monkey's disguise. Now, it's not clear to me why this gives away the monkey's disguise. I, I heard somebody say on the internet, for whatever this may be worth, that uh, the one of the things that's lost in the English translation is the different politeness markers in the original Mandarin. So maybe the pig is referring with a certain, certain level of politeness that makes it clear that he's referring to his comrade uh, and not a stranger. Uh, but somehow this remark lets the demons know that it's really the, the monkey and they have a big fight with him. Uh, and then, oh, what happens? I'm, I'm beginning to kind of forget the order of events. Uh, at some point, uh, they get out their gourd and the, the monkey is, I forget how this happened, but the monkey is disguised now as his brother. So one of the monkey's names is Sun the Novice. But he, he says, oh, I'm actually Novice Sun, the brother of the monkey. And they, they get out the gourd uh, and uh, the, 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 he tosses up the gourd and says, all right, Sun Novice, uh, if I... Uh, the thing is, if you respond to your name, you get sucked into the gourd. So the demon says, uh, he's trying to get the monkey to respond to his name. He calls out Sun Novice, and the monkey thinks, okay, Sun Novice is actually not really my name. I, I, I lied to the demon. So he thinks maybe it's safe to respond. But turns out that any response, whether it's your real name or not, sucks you into the gourd. So then he's trapped inside the gourd, and the monkey is over here... The demon's talking about how after three hours, anyone left in the gourd will be turned to pus. Now, the, the monkey suspects that he's immune to this because when he was in the prison, uh, when he was imprisoned in the furnace of heaven, his, his, his body was hardened into this hard iron. But he's not 100% sure. So he, he fools the monsters into opening up the gourd um, by pretending to, to get uh, dissolve into a pus. And he, 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 he thinks for a little bit about what, what he should do. It, should he piss into the gourd so that this, the sound of the piss sloshing around is going to make them think that it's uh, pus? Uh, by the way, th this is as good a place as any to mention that... Um, Bodily functions are quite often part of the humor of this book. Um, uh, characters are frequently referred to as taking a shit, uh, having a piss. Um, so, you, you, you know, if, if, if you're easily offended by that kind of thing, I, I guess it's not a book for the delicate. Uh, although it, it never really goes into obscene uh, details about any of these things. They're just alluded to. Um, well, I mean, yet. I'm, I'm, I'm still only on volume two. Anyways, yeah, the monkey eventually uh, just resorts to calling out, oh no, I'm being turned into pus. And he, he used one of, one of his hairs again to replicate his, his body being turned into pus where, well, the real monkey is disguised as an insect. And they open it up, and the, the monkey flies out as an insect, but they, they don't realize that the monkey has escaped. Uh, so the demon kings are drinking, and then the monkey, uh, who's escaped, reverts back to his form uh, and pretends to be uh, yet a different brother. This one is Sun Novice, or uh, Novice the Sun. So, uh, I, I don't remember. So, some other variation of that name and he's come back again to fight the demons again uh and one the the junior demon king who, who's portrayed as being the braver of the two brothers uh goes out to fight the monkey again uh and i think that's yeah that brings me up to where i am now just at the beginning of chapter 35. Oh. I feel a little bit exhausted just racking my memory trying to recount everything that happened uh, in my reading this week. 
But, uh, yeah. That's everything that happened in my reading this week, as far as I can remember. Uh, like I said, I, I find it difficult at the end of the week to go back and remember all this stuff that happened. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a... It's a... Again, part of this could be getting old and, and not my memory not being as sharp as it used to be. Which, if that's what's happening, that's what's happening. I guess there's no point in worrying over anything you can't control. Uh, but, but I also do feel like this story is just all over the place. So it, it's, it's entertaining to read. I, I've been enjoying reading it. But then uh, you're like, okay, what happened this week again? I, I, I mean, I remember in the broad strokes, like the, the monkeys fighting the demons in the cave, the priest is captured, uh, stuff like that. But, but coming back and remembering the details of exactly what happened when with the fights, um, I'm, I'm not remembering that terribly well. But anyways, uh, I'll stop the video here.